Max Historica. If you've ever seen a compass, you know that the needle points north. That's because a compass needle is a magnet, and it points towards the Earth's magnetic North Pole. And I'm using this compass to try to get to the North Pole. But it isn't easy. In fact, scientists knew there was such a thing as the North Pole as far back as the 16th century. But no one was able to actually get there on foot until 1927. You'd think it wouldn't be that hard, right? I mean, the needle points you straight there. Just follow the needle, right? But now that I'm here, I realize it's really difficult. I mean, the wind is incredible, and the snow is intense, and, and it's so cold. My hands are, my hands, um, yeah. So, OK, we were not really at the North Pole. We were just sort of recreating uh, that. Um, but still, I salute the brave explorers who tried to make it there in the name of science. And I got a sense of it because the the, the wind from the fan and the, and the fake the fake snow was um, okay. Everybody, let's pack it up. I mean, that was that was that was pretty good. I just didn't know about that other about that other camera. Anthony and I are maxing out the spool racer. We start with a long coil of bungee cord, which is kind of like a giant elastic, and feed it through the spool. Then we put on a big piece of plastic to act as our washer and use a long pole as the pencil. We flip the spool on its side to wind it up. Then we flip it back, and it's ready to go. All right, so we have it all wound up, and we're ready to try it again, but with one change. Uh, Phil. Yeah. What's with the trike? I ride the trike. It's like I always say, what's the point of building something big if I can't ride it? There's no way you're going to fit on this thing. No, no, I don't, I don't put my feet on the pedals. I put my feet here on the back, right? And OK, then, yeah, I get then, it, I get it. You got it? Uh, hold, hold on, I got to do my helmet up. Safety first. Ready? I'm on it. OK, three, two, one, go. Oh, it's working. It's working. <laughs> Amazing. All the stored energy in the bungee cord is being released, and the spool starts to turn. There's even enough energy that I can get pulled along behind it. It's not going that fast, no, though. And it's... it's pretty good, though. It still pulls me. Right? Yeah, pretty good. So spool racer actually able to get pulled by it. Yeah. You know what? I think we can go even bigger. Bigger? Yes. Well, what did you have in mind? I'm glad you asked. Uh, oh, oh, yeah! You, what is this? What this you... is an industrial cable spool, and this is the biggest size that they make. <laughs> and I thought we would do the same thing with this. What do you think? I think this could generate a huge amount of energy. OK, so all we got to do is just build it just like we built that other one. Just bigger. Except way bigger. Let's do it. <laughs> When you set a domino on its end, you're giving it potential energy because it can fall. Ooh, and when you put two dominoes together, you can start a chain reaction because that one will fall into that one. Ah, but it's a lot more fun with more dominoes. Setting up a run of dominoes is a lot of fun, but it takes a flat surface and a steady hand. And if you want to do it yourself, add gaps, so if one part falls, it doesn't take out the whole run. Last one. There. I had some dominoes left, but I did it. I made the Science Max logo. See? Science right? Max. Sort of. Let's see how it works. Ready? Yeah! <laughs> now it's time to max it out! Mini Max! You may recognize this. It is a spring. Yes, good for you. But did you know that springs can defy gravity? Whoa! Gravity de defy. Gravity defy. Gravity defy. Look at it fly! Defying. OK, not exactly. But what if I was to hold the spring like this and let it go? What'll happen? It'll fall. Yes, it'll fall. That's, that is true. But while it's falling, what happens to this end? Does it stay in one place? Does it go up or does it go down? Let's find out. 
I'll bring this in so you can really see it. Okay, ready? Watch close. Did you see? Did you, no? Okay, tell you what. We'll watch it again, this time in slow motion. See? The bottom doesn't move, and here's why. When the top of the spring is released, gravity and the tension of the spring are pulling on it. The bottom of the spring is being pulled down by gravity and up by the tension of the spring. These forces cancel out, stopping the bottom of the spring from falling until the top reaches it. Until there's no more tension, and then the top passes the bottom and the whole thing falls. That is how it works. But here is the real question. Will it happen differently with a longer spring? Huh? Well, I just happen to have a longer spring! Let's max it out! Bring it. Don't tangle it. So, now that I'm up high on this fire escape, let's test it out. Okay, three, two, one, go! A longer spring still has the same forces working on it. The tension of the spring pulling it up and gravity pulling it down. No matter what size of spring, these forces cancel out for the bottom of the spring until the top meets up with it. So there you go, an almost gravity-defying spring! <laughs> uh, hey, there's no door handle on this door. I guess I have to take the stairs. Whoa. So our larger version of the Stomp Rocket worked, but it didn't go as high as the first version. Chris and I see how we can improve the design. The larger pipe and the larger rocket works really well. It does work really well. I am afraid, though, that the larger pipe means that the same amount of air is flowing slower out the nozzle than it did before. Oh, so because we're moving only this much air, it's not going to go as fast because this is a bigger tube. We need a bigger volume over here to match our larger So uh, a nozzle. bigger bottle. That's right. I got a bigger bottle right here. Ha-ha! Bigger bottle! So um, hold that, and uh, then all we have to do is tape the bigger bottle I'm not sure on. if that's going to... Yeah, like this. Still, though, I'm crazy. Yeah, so then bit. all I need to do is tape it on. Chris and I attach a larger bottle to our tube. We just need some risers to adjust the height, then we tape it on and we're good to go. Everything else, including the rocket, stays the same. I still don't understand how you're gonna step on this one. It's just too stiff. I, I have a plan. Ha 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 ha! Sledgehammer! You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. One, two, three! <laughs> <laughs> it blew the top off the rocket. Right off it the also top. blew the bottom. Huh. Looks like it's a bit rigid to uh, change its volume so quickly. So it's kind of a one-time use thing, huh? I think so. So why don't we try increasing the volume? Even bigger tube, yeah. even bigger uh, container. What's bigger than a... That, that's the biggest bottle they make. What else holds air? What about an air mattress? Do you think we could use an air mattress? I think we could, yeah, a really big... Air mattress. Oh, totally. High five. Okay. I love that idea. Max Historica. This is Archimedes. What? Who said that? Yeah, uh, it's me, the narrator. We're doing a segment. Oh, well, I was working. Don't sneak up on a guy like that. Uh, <clears throat> this is Archimedes, an ancient inventor and one of the greatest scientific minds ever. Ooh. One of his famous inventions was the Archimedes screw. Ooh, um, uh, mm, ah. <laughs> Which was used to make holes in wood. No, that's not what it's for. It's, it's for water. Oh, uh, right. Used to make holes in water. What, what, what? No! Look, did you even do your homework? I, um... Hold on. It's, uh... Yeah. It's, here, it's here somewhere. Ah. Um, Look, I'll just show you. You see, in ancient times, we had many uses for something that could lift water up from a well or to take lake water uh, from uh, the lake and put it into a farmer's field and that sort of thing. Ah, OK. I've got it from here. So Archimedes invented a screw and he drilled a hole in the side of that container. No. 
No, no. Uh, look, just just sit down. Oh, oh, I'll, I'll explain it, okay? I am sitting. I'm in a voiceover booth. Good for you. Now be quiet. Now look. What you do is you put the screw in the water like this, and then you want to raise the water higher, you see? And so turn it around like so, and the water fills each gap in the screw, and it starts to come up. It gets to the top, and look at this. Look, we've got water coming at the top there. The water is being pumped up. It is the first water pump. I see. Still seems like a lot of work to fill a glass, but it's very cute. No, we made them bigger. We obviously were not going to make them this big. This is not very useful. Uh, right. Uh, Archimedes, one of the greatest scientific minds ever. 